and welcome back everyone we're, today we're going to take a quick look at how to clock the GeForce GTX 1060 now to get started you're going to need a few things that I recommend one is you're going to need a stress test and that's why we're running Unigen Valley in the background here because that will force the GPU into its full 3D clock state so that while we're overclocking we can instantaneously test for stability now second off you're going to need Tech Power Ups GPU Z because you're going to use the sensor tab to monitor the clock rate and fluctuations that it makes, as well as the temperatures, fan speed, and load, and therefore. But for actually overclocking, even though there are different utilities, my personal preference is the EVGA Precision XOC for Pascal. Now, before you really get started too far, the first thing you want to do is take take the power target and drag it on over to 116 with the temp target at 91 C let that uh, go ahead and apply that now I know a lot of people are like 91 degrees Celsius well you're probably not gonna reach that now that you've increased the power target and the temperature target now you can start with overclocking the GPU offset now you can start here and what I recommend if this is your first time doing it start with plus 10% um, increments until you reach your maximum core overclock we found this one to be roughly 225 megahertz so we're going to go ahead and apply that and you'll see it change up here and boom it instantly kicks up to 2113 megahertz now the catch is it's going to drop see how it just dropped to 2088 now that's part of GPU boost at work here so we'll get back to how do you keep that up a little bit higher but next thing you want to do is start with your memory overclock and I always recommend this one you can start this one at 50 megahertz increases so start there and what we found for ours is we can go all the way up to uh, 500 and be perfectly stable so we're going to go ahead and apply it so you can see that it's applied here on the tachometer if you will now we're going to address the 2088 megahertz we're going to get that back up to over 2100 so to do that this little tab right here is your voltage increase and we found that going up to about 50 percent on here is perfectly fine it's kind of there we go 50 percent hit apply and boom there we are and we're straight up 2100 megahertz so 2101 in the GPU clock now after we did find that after a couple of hours of running valley it did drop back down to 2088 but if you didn't do this it would drop down to about 2050 so either way that's a decent little overclock and we're gonna overlay a screen here showing how the temperatures looked and the core clock after that two hour mark using the stock fan curve now you can increase the fan curve to to be more aggressive but me personally I prefer it a little bit quiet and before we take a look at the performance result from doing this using um, Ubisoft's The Division what I wanted to make sure that I made clear was this is in an EVGA Hadron ITX case so it's a really small case and really limited airflow and we've got an i5-6600K at 4 gigahertz with DDR4 3200 megahertz Trident Z RAM and it's on a Z1 EVGA Z170 Stinger motherboard. So with this out of the way, now that we've seen how to get there with the overclock, let's look at the performance difference that you get.
Now, there you have it. In the end, the performance delta looked like it was somewhere roughly around 12% increase in performance, which isn't bad. So guys, if you found this video informative or helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if there's something we missed. And we'll catch you all in the next one.